Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Robin Cap 10. Uh, this little plane has uh, got some pretty serious performance. It's also a tail dragger, making things a little bit complicated. And it also has a couple little twerks to it that are uh, not twerks, but tweaks that you can kind of play around with in order to make it work best for you. All right, let's jump in. All right, first things first, uh, we're looking around this aircraft. It is utilitarian. It is uh, definitely a Spartan layout. You know, there's not too, too much stuff in here that we need to kind of worry about. Again, this plane was designed to be basically a two-seater stunt plane, although you can use it for general kind of cruising around. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you take this particular aircraft on a long IFR flight. As a matter of fact, it's not even rated for IFR, so kind of keep that in the back of your head. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, first things first is uh, you want to make sure the parking brake is in the set position. Uh, common mistakes. We want to go ahead and adjust our seat. My seat's looking uh, pretty good right there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. You're going to make sure the master switch is off. You're going to make sure alternator is out. Your magnetos are both going to be in the off position as well. Uh, you want to make sure your uh, mixture is in the lean position. I'm going to go ahead and check that real quick. Ah, who did that to me? So we're going to make sure it's go. You want to make sure your cockpit heating control is closed and everything along those lines are off. Now notice this aircraft actually has the ability to do crazy things like turn on individual switches for flaps and all that stuff. Absolutely wild. Again, a very, very different kind of aircraft. The other thing you want to notice is our fuel tank itself has the ability to switch between the front position, the rear position, and of course the off position if you're looking for something a little bit different. And again, there's just a different type of aircraft. Very, very different type of aircraft. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So I'm going to go flip on the master switch first. As soon as you do that, notice we have electronic indicators as opposed to engine-driven indicators, which I think is interesting. We're going to double-check to make sure our flaps are in the retracted position. Go ahead and snap them up. Looks pretty good to me. We're going to flip on our anti-collision light. So we're going to come down here. We've got all sorts of fun little lights here. I'm going to flip this one on, flip on my position light as well, just giving everybody around me kind of little heads up that, hey, I'm getting everything started here. We're going to take our throttle and we're going to push it all the way in. We're going to set our mixture all the way in. Interesting, right? So we're going to go ahead and come over here. We're going to make sure we are on the front fuel tank. That seems to be the good selection here. We're going to flip on the electric pump. This is going to prime us. Um, just go ahead there. Looks good. Electric pump gets shut back off. We're now going to go ahead and uh, we're going to take the throttle and the lever, and we're going to push it forward and just crack it about 5% or so. This isn't old school. We're going to take the mixture and we're going to lean it. Now, you're probably sitting there going, okay, that's a, that's a little different. That's a little different. Uh, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Well, the way that this one works, which, like I said, is a little different than you're probably used to, is the fact that now that we've uh, primed the engine, we're just going to go ahead and kind of crank on it directly. So, again, you've got all your regular switches here located down here towards the bottom. I'm just kind of looking around, make sure I'm not going to chop up the guy. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I feel so sorry for that guy. I've hacked him into pieces so many times, it's not even funny. We're going to come down here where the magneto switch is now located. We're just going to click it over and we're going to crank it. Now we're in position one. And all we're going to do is hang it. And as soon as the engine catches, you're going to want to go ahead and reset your mixture. Here we go. All right. Now we are in business. Okay. There we go. Nice. Okay. Everything is looking pretty good now. Beautiful. All right. Going to go ahead and stabilize at about 1,000 RPM there. Looks pretty good right there. Delightful. All right. Next thing you know, I want to go ahead and turn on my anti um, alternator master. Whoop, click that one already. We're going to take the throttle and play with it just a teeny tiny bit, like I said, to get us about 1,000 RPM. If we need to, we can, of course, pull up the... Um, uh, you can pull out the mixture just a teeny tiny bit. Now we're basically going to sit here and let this thing warm up. Now that our alternator is turned on, of course, we want to go ahead and flip on our avionics. We'll go ahead and click that switch real quickly. I'm just going to confirm that everything else looks really, really good real quickly. All right, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Okay, so we're looking in pretty good shape. Uh, now it's just a matter of kind of getting this thing going. There's a couple different things we can do for takeoff. Uh, we can go ahead and set the flaps and then bring them up. We can do all sorts of crazy things like that. Generally, uh, we're going to be interested in a takeoff speed of about 110 kilometers per hour hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a quick look around, make sure everything's looking pretty good. We're just going to be taxiing right over there to the right and doing a straight up takeoff. Nothing too, too complicated here. Give it a little bit of power. Whoa! Got to be quick on the brakes with this thing. Nice. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, taxi us right on over. Now, 
Now I'm amazed how stable this thing actually uh, can sit here is uh, moving along. A lot of times in tail draggers, it's a constant battle, basically trying to go back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, trying to keep yourself in control. Again, never press the brakes too, too hard when we're operating any sort of tail draggers. Uh, whenever you do that, things tend to end poorly for you. Let's go ahead and set our flaps for takeoff. We're gonna drop them to the 15 degree position. Mine ourselves here, this looks pretty good. Take a look around. Oh man, these skies are beautiful in France this evening. Go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of power and we're gonna get rolling. So for this particular aircraft, uh, during takeoff, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your controls are more or less in neutral position. Your tail should be lifting up at about 50 kilometers an hour or so. Uh, again, we're gonna be lifting off about 110. Don't force it, otherwise you're going to bend the tail wheel. Please don't do that, it's an expensive plane. All right, line ourselves up. We're gonna be using full throttles. Here we go. And we are off. Whoa. Now, whoa, whoa, gotta be quick on your feet here. There's the tail up, just like we said, about 50 knots. Now you're just gonna sit here hanging out on the ground until you get to about 110. Give it a little teeny tiny tug, and you are now airborne. Gonna go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of climb here. You're looking for about 140 kilometers per hour as your initial climb speed. Gonna go ahead and bring up that flap. And, whoa, boy, can you feel that torque. Gotta love aircraft like that. I actually gotta stand on the rudder here in order to keep this thing nice and straight. But ah, not too bad at all. All right, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. Okay, so our best climb angle in this aircraft is gonna get us about, I said, 140, 130 knots. Uh, usually a normal climb is, uh, knots, what am I saying? Kilometers per hour. Usually a normal climb in this particular aircraft is gonna be about 160 kilometers per hour. And again, you can totally dictate that how you wanna do it. Uh, generally with this particular aircraft, uh, you wanna go ahead and keep in mind, we are not a constant speed propeller aircraft. So because of that and our fixed pitch kind of status, we have to actually kind of keep that in the back of our head. If we wanna reduce engine power, the RPM is just gonna kind of come down on its own. So uh, normally what they say is uh, when you're climbing, you want to be doing about 2300 RPM. You can see I've got this thing revved up pretty darn high right now. So I'm actually going to drop it down to about 25 inches. I've got a pretty good amount of turbulence today, which uh, doesn't help given the fact that we're a little tiny stunt plane here. And this thing is a pretty darn high performance. By the way, in case uh, you missed our initial takeoff location here, uh, we're sitting here basically in uh, central France, uh, not too, too far out by Paris. We're going to be having taken off from that little strip there. We're going to make our way to a little grass strip so we can execute our landing as well. Again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this aircraft if I want to kind of be going around uh, kind of cruising the countryside kind of in an IFR situation. I recommend this uh, mostly for stunt work or if you just want to kind of get there in a hurry. All right, going to go bring ourselves over here this way. We're just in the outskirts of Paris at this time. All right, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and level the aircraft off at about 1,500 feet. Now we're a little high, but that's okay. Interesting that my altitude is in feet, but everything else is in metric. That's actually not uncommon. Now I'm going to go ahead and back my power down. I want about 2,500 RPM. That's a cruising pretty darn fast than an aircraft like this, but it's about what I want it to be. And the interesting thing is, though, once you reduce that RPM, that effect of the torque goes away almost instantly. You can feel that it's a much, much more comfortable experience now. That's feeling pretty good. That's feeling pretty good. Okay. So the recommended cruise speed for this aircraft is 200 kilometers per hour. So as it stands right now, we're actually basically in a full maximum power, almost sort of a climb sort of a situation if we wanted to use this sort of power. So if we want to get 200 kilometers an hour, that's going to get us about 1800 RPM, which uh, seems a little drastic uh, given that uh, most aircraft is uh, considerably more than that. But uh, for something that's this lightweight, it really doesn't need much in order to get you cruising. And again, this aircraft wasn't designed to really be kind of like a cruise kind of aircraft. There's 200 kilometers an hour. I'm going to go ahead and increase my power and just try to find a nice stable RPM for that. That's looking pretty good. Again, it's going to be dependent on altitude. As you get higher, the air is going to get thinner. Your speed's going to indicate lower. And that's feeling pretty good. So that's about 2400. So we don't actually match the POH in that regard. I find that actually kind of interesting, but that's okay. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Ah, remember, if you fall into a river in Paris, you're insane. Take a look out the window. I think Charles de Gaulle is right over yonder. And you've got this nice little area. Oh, we were supposed to pass over Versailles, but I missed it. I've actually been to Paris. Uh, this is uh, where I went on a honeymoon many, many, many moons ago, so to speak. Definitely, definitely. Ah, there it is. Uh, definitely an incredible city. I just, I can't get over how things in Europe are just, it, it's just like, it's amazing. It's just, it's a little different from what I'm used to on a daily basis, to say the least. 
Also, uh, they have wonderful bread. Absolutely spectacular bread. But I've already commented on things like that before. Okay, uh, we have ourselves a little uh, GPS. This is a GNH. I think this is a Ford GNS. It's a GNS 430, exactly. Uh, we've had a video on this earlier where you can kind of see its functionality. It's enough to get you out of trouble, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend, you know, flying any long distances with it. Again, you can see we've got about five nautical miles, or five minutes or so to get to our destination. So that gives us a pretty good look of the southern side of Paris here. I'm just impressed that I was able to find everything. Usually I'm not that good at this stuff. Yep, downtown. Uh, Mursi d'Orsay, and you've got all the main major train stations. We can go stop by Euro Disney. Well, actually, I think it's Disneyland Paris now. Uh, we can always do that while we're down here, too. Okay. Now, one thing I find very interesting, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, is the inclinometer here shows that uh, we've got a little bit of a left-handed drift here, but this one says that we're pretty centered. Now, notice if I stomp on the rudder, I stomp on it the other way, you'll notice that it doesn't make much of a difference. So uh, when you're trying to coordinate the plane, you want to do the one that's in the center bottom of the dashboard. Now I can give myself just a little bit more trim. That's looking pretty good. We've kind of settled at about 200 kilometers an hour. We're not working this plane too, too hard. Okay, let's talk about the fuel tanks real quick. Now this aircraft has an interesting fuel system. Like I said, you have a front fuel tank and you have a rear fuel tank. Now the reason that's an interesting kind of problem is on account of the fact that in this particular aircraft, um, if you let burn too much front fuel tank, your aircraft becomes very tail heavy, which makes it less stable. That is not something you're usually used to in aircraft like this. Usually you have a left tank and a right tank and a lot of times you can run both of them at the same time. Oh, by the way, if you weren't clear with the Magneto stuff, remember to turn the Magnetos on, then press the start button. Maybe I wasn't clear when I pressed it. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. All right, we're going to be just about to our destination in just a few minutes. We're going to start a little descent here. Take a look around, enjoy the uh, French countryside here. Again, it's um, this time of year, I'd expect there'd be a little bit more snow, but yeah, maybe there's having a good season. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a Paris Metro for sure. Kind of hoping, yeah, I'm not going to see it today, but that's okay. Okay, let's talk about landing this aircraft. Now, this aircraft likes to float when you land. It is uh, not what you're probably used to as far as uh, other aircraft that you've probably flown around it. The reason it's like this is because of the fact that it's extremely lightweight. It's got tons and tons and tons of power. And, of course, when you put the flaps down, it just wants to go on and on and on and on and on. So you have to kind of be kind of careful with that when you're going to do our landing. So you typically, when you're landing this one, uh, you want to be touching the ground at about 100 kilometers an hour. Your approach speed uh, typically is about 120 kilometers an hour, which is a little fast but it's again not too too bad don't forget if you have no flaps it's going to affect your speed significantly wow look at that yeah there's the train the rer it's fun because uh you know my french skills is basically minus one so you know try to translate some of those things is always kind of fun yep that's, that's exactly what i remember of course you didn't get to see it from this angle we went into cdg which is way way up that way okay let's go ahead and put this thing down on the ground now so to descend it's pretty straightforward we're just going to reduce engine power yeah, about 15 inches is going to be plenty we're just going to nose over a little tiny bit and you're looking for about 500 feet per minute that's sort of a general rule with any sort of general aviation aircraft again now uh, if you want to go too too aggressively with this you're just going to end up blowing your eardrums it's not very pleasant not necessarily blowing but at the very least um you're going to want to pop your ears a lot when you get back down to the ground all right, the airport we're going to be landing at is not the world's largest airport, as you'll see, which is exactly why I chose it for our purposes today. I'm actually going to reduce my power down to 10 inches here. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. It's going to kind of straighten out. All right. Now, when I say a small runway, I mean a small runway. At least it's easy to trim this plane, not gonna lie. Mm, nose up a little bit. All right, lined up pretty well now. We can go ahead and cross the field in the middle, and then we're gonna come swing back around the other way and I'll be able to see everything okay. And again, I'm at about 1800 RPM here, we're descending pretty consistently. Now, because we are a tail dragger with non-retracting landing gear, we can be a little rough on the landing, but if we're a little fast, it's going to be a lot of landings to successfully actually land. All right, do you see it? 
yeah, it should be pretty clear right there. You can see it right in the middle of everything right there. Got a little bit of turbulence today, which is uh, not too, too much. Now, the wind's coming out of the west, so when we land, we want to be basically landing into that direction uh, towards uh, Normandy. So, of course, if I want to be lazy, we could actually go ahead and cross it at the midfield, take left, 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 and stick the thing on the ground. That's probably what we're going to do. Go ahead and study everything real quick and get ready for landing. We have, you can see, we have two different flap setting. We have a takeoff setting and we have a landing setting. I love aircraft that are nice and simple like that. It's just, it, it's relaxing. All right, remember our approach speed is going to be about 120 kilometers an hour. Our touchdown speed should be about 100. Anything less than that, and now we're probably doing a 300 point landing. All right. Looking directly above us. Yeah, you definitely need a little bit more RPM than you need in the POH in order to keep a constant speed with this aircraft. It's kind of a bummer. All right, I'm looking out the window. I can see pretty darn clearly. I can actually go like that and look out the down. Okay, looks good. You can see all the arrows pointing. I love that detail. All right, let's go ahead and reduce throttle. Let's go take a look at the window real quick. You can see all the facilities. The nose up just a teeny tiny bit. We're going to go ahead and drop that first notch of flaps when we get to 150 kilometers per hour. And the first notch is coming down. We're going to do a modified traffic pattern here. We don't want to do anything too sophisticated. And there's our destination. It's pretty good right there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and begin descending. We're going to put that next notch of flaps down. This aircraft takes a long time for the flaps to deploy, so be patient with it. Okay, let's go ahead and land this thing. So again, like I said, you want about 500 feet per minute on your general approach here. Look out the window. It's looking pretty good so far. Again, I'm drifting a little bit, but that's all right. Here we are definitely way too high. See my little wing flap in there? Mm, come out slightly more. There it is. Okay, let's go ahead and bring ourselves around and get us down right about 110, 120 kilometers an hour. is kind of a good speed for a general approach. We're going to go right into a uh, base leg here. Way too high. I'm actually going to drop the throttle and push the nose down a little bit. There we go. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Uh, what am I saying? We're high. All right. Looks pretty good. Nice. Here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing sideways. Remember, if you have to do an emergency, get out of here in a hurry, the whole plane is going to twist out from underneath you. We're actually going to do a touch and go real quick. All right, we're looking for that big old line on the runway there. Remember, we want to be touching the ground at about 100 kilometers an hour, nose slightly up. Looks pretty good over the end of the runway. Kill the throttle. It's going to float. And nose up. And we have weight on wheels. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and hold the brakes. I'm going to bring up one notch of flaps. I'm going to go ahead and give it full power. Remember, when you give it full power, it's going to want to twist out from underneath you. There we are, 100. Give it a gentle tug. And we are on our way again. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons uh, I went ahead and turned that into a touch and go rather than a full stop landing is um, this is a stunt plane. And it's kind of fun to play with just a little bit. The most important thing about any sort of stunts, though, is you keep in mind what your speed limits are. You don't want to be overflying this plane. You can see I have one speed for 235 and have another one for 200. The 200 is the critical one. Any fancy maneuvers we do must be done at a speed of less than 200 kilometers an hour. Otherwise, we risk overstressing the plane. Now, when it comes to maneuvers with this aircraft, uh, this is not the most overpowered stunt plane, which is actually kind of good for us. Now you can see we're getting a little stall warning there because our nose is up much too high. There we go. So because of that, uh, we need to kind of get build up speed before we can do any useful stunts here. I'm going to get myself a little bit more altitude here before I start going too crazy. And that's looking pretty good right about... Man, do you need some right foot with this aircraft. Holy smokes. I'm actually going to switch to my other fuel tank real quick. Or you can just shut the engine off because you're silly. Ha 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 ha. The other fuel tank. That's the one I want. Good. Start burning out of the rear. Okay. Now we've got ourselves a little bit of speed. Remember, do not exceed 200 kilometers an hour. We're just going to go ahead and do a nice old knife edge turn and wow, see how many G's we can build up with that little meter here. All right. For a turn like this, going to go get it full throttle. Going to go ahead and pull on the edge. And we're just going to pull and see how far we can go. Yeah, that's about four and a half G's. That's, uh, that's pretty substantial. That's pretty substantial. Well, let's see if we can increase the G limit a little bit more. Go ahead and do a split S. 
giving ourselves a little bit of altitude here. We're just going to go ahead and roll over. Don't forget when you do a split S to go ahead and kill the throttle. Oh my. That's five Gs. Oh, okay. This is no extra 300, but it can pull five Gs. Of course, uh, if we want to make everybody in the back puke, we can push the nose up, kill the throttle, and go ahead and just push forward. And now we have zero Gs and a floating out of my sea. Oh my God, runk. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay, I'll go ahead and do uh, one more maneuver, my favorite. I'll give it full power again, build up a little bit more speed. It is definitely not the most sensitive as far as that goes, but it is a lot of fun. All right, lift yourselves up. We got that little marker on the side of the window. Those up, left foot, right foot, and we've gone into a spin. <laughs> I'm sure the neighbors did not appreciate that nearly as much as I did. Okay. Hopefully this uh, video has been helpful as far as going over the absolute basics of this aircraft. Key things you got to know is uh, when you're taking off, you're going to need a lot of right foot in order to stay straight. You're looking for a liftoff speed of about 110 kilometers per hour. Best cruise speed on this, or climb speed I should say, is about 160. For those of you who are trying to do work as far as uh, getting yourself a solid RPM, you want to make sure that you do it in a way that gets you about 200 kilometers an hour cruise. And when you go to land this thing, you want to approach it about 120 and you want to be landing on the ground at about 100 kilometers per hour. Other than that, you should see a little checklist that you can kind of poke around through on the uh, description below and enjoy.